All right, welcome back. In this video, we're going to uh, solve for um, m sub 2. And m sub 2 is equal to your uh, stiffness matrix 2 um, times your delta 2 plus your fm 2. Okay? And remember, our uh, k sub 2 uh, was... 2 over 9, 1 over 9, 1 over 54, negative 1 over 54. Then you had 1 over 9, 2 over 9, uh, 1 over 54, negative 1 over 54. And then you had 1 over 54, 1 over 54, uh, 1 over 486, uh, negative 1 over 486. Then you had negative 1 over 54, uh, negative 1 over 54, negative 1 over 486, and then finally uh, 1 over 486, right? That was your K sub 2 matrix, what we found very, very early on. Now, delta sub 2, um, and actually let me write the degrees of freedoms here. We had 1, so it would be a 1, 2, right, 1, Two and then our restrained um, were seven, eight, seven, eight. So we had, you know, one, two, seven, eight. So this is remember this is element two. Uh, this is element two, one, two, seven, eight. This is element two. Um, and we want to figure out what's going on internally on that element, right? That piece of member. And if we scroll down. And then scroll back up because the scrolling doesn't want to cooperate. We have uh, delta sub 2. So what are the deformations um, or the deformations happening at uh, member 2? In order with the restrained, or I'm sorry, with the degrees of freedom. So 1 and 2 are unrestrained, right? And what are those values? Well, we figured out what those values were when we calculated um, unrestrained deformations up here. This one, this one up here. 2 and 3 are 0, and negative 1728 over 7. All right, so we have a EI here. I keep forgetting to put that. And then we have a, a 1 was 1728 over 7, and then 2 was 0, and then 7 and 8 are restrained degrees of freedom, right? They don't have any... Uh, deformations because they can't move those so those become zero All right this is one over EI and then to that we add FM2 and FM2 was 54 negative 54 18 and 18 and if we solve that out I uh, notice again the EI's cancel we get 762 over 7 negative 186 over 7, 158 over 7, and 94 over 7. And these values correspond to the reactions happening at degrees of freedoms 1, 2, 7, and 8. All right, so 1 and 2 were rotational, right? So these are obviously moments. So if I drew um, element two two right it had uh, you know this uniformly distributed load that's the only thing that was on there uh, then you have one was this way so one was uh, 762 over 7 kip foot and then on the left side or on the right side you had a negative 186 over 7 uh, and that was that means it was going uh, clockwise. 186 over 7 and then you have these two shear 7 and 8 right because 7 and 8 are the vertical degrees of freedom uh, you had 158 over 7 and uh, 94 over 7 kips all right so for members uh, 3 and 4 um, I'll do them really quickly in the next video and we are pretty much done with this example so Alright, so see you in the last and final video.